Hi, thank you so much for joining me in part three of weaving your tapestry on a cardboard loom. If you have not watched part one of this video series, I would suggest to watch part one first where I teach you how to create this cardboard loom. And then once you have completed that, you can join me for part three where we will go over how to create your own wall tapestry. For this activity, some of the supplies that you will need is your cardboard loom, the most important, a pair of scissors, and about five, four or five colors of yarn. So for this activity, I chose this burgundy, this chunkier yarn, yellow, red, and then this turquoise. So I'm still trying to decide if I'm gonna use all of these colors within my tapestry, but I like to at least have a variety of colors as I'm doing the project. You will also need the ruler and a stick of some sort that your tapestry will hang on. So this one, um, I have this very small one. This one I picked up when I was uh, just taking a walk on a trail, I found this one. So again, like I used in part two, I used the ruler as just something that gives me just a little bit more space. I put my yarn in a little ball, and then I just do the under over weave, starting with the under first, and then I'll go under, over, under, over, under, over, and then I'll do about five or six rows of that. So once you're finished with uh, your bottom portion, you just want to double knot it at the end. And then after this, we're going to add the tassels. So we'll add these. To create these tassels here, we are going to be doing the Raya knot. And so how you do that is you first pick your color which I decided I was going to stick with this burgundy. I was going to go all the way across to here, and then I was gonna switch it up with this white, or this bright yellow. So we'll see how that looks. Um, because my tapestry is pretty small, you don't wanna measure out too much yarn. So, you know, you can make it about that. That's about how long it'll be. You can cut it. Um, you can measure it again, so by putting it on the bottom, that's where it will lay. So then you know it will be about this long. We are going to double layer these tassels. So start by cutting out at least 20. So that's two. So you'll start by cutting at least 20 of these strings and then I'll show you after you've made all those cuts how to do the Raya knot. So once you've cut all of your pieces of yarn, you'll have a little bundle like this. Um, if you find yourself running out of the little tassels, you can always go back and cut some more. So you're going to take two pieces of yarn from that little bundle right here, and you'll find the middle of them. You'll take that middle and you'll place it on the first two right pieces of yarn on your the warp. You'll place it over the first two pieces of yarn like this, and then you're going to go behind, so the right side will go behind and under, and then you'll pull it through like that. You'll do the same with the left side. You'll go over, under, pull it through, so it should look like this. They're both coming through, and then you'll pull it down. You'll take the next two, do the same thing, and this time you're going to kind of overlay it here. So starting with now the second and the third 
piece of yarn, you'll go over, around, through, and then over, around, through, and then you can take your finger and push it down. So these ones will go over each other. You can kind of tug at them a little bit, make sure you're not tugging them too much, but you want them to be just kind of straight. You'll do that. So for me, I'm going to do two colors on the bottom, just like this one. As you can see, I did a few rows of this burgundy color and then I switched the orange color and did the majority of the orange color. This time, I'll have the majority of the burgundy and then I'm going to I'm going to switch to the yellow color. So however you want to do it or whatever colors you chose, um, if you have four colors even, you can do that as well. Um, so I will just do the burgundy and then um, one row. When I get here, I'll transition to the yellow color. So stopping at this one. And then, um, and then I'll do the burgundy again. I'm going to do two rows of these tassels to make it just a little bit thicker. So um, I'll show you just that process as I do it as well. Now we're at the yellow. We'll take our yellow, you'll find the center of it, and then you're gonna go over the burgundy like this, and then pull down. So we'll do the yellow, and then once we're finished with the yellow at the end, I'm gonna go back to the burgundy and then do the burgundy across, and then another row of the yellow. So once you're finished with your tassels, this is about what it looks like. Uh, if you can see the cardboard behind your tassels when you lay them flat, you might want to add another layer. Uh, otherwise, you can just keep it at these two. And then what I like to do is I like to connect a color that's similar to the tassel as my starting color for the actual tapestry. So um, you don't have to. You can begin with any color after you finished with the tassels. Um, the great thing about weaving is it's really up to you. So it's whatever you want to do. Um, there are no like rules of where colors need to be. It's really whatever makes you feel best about your project, which is great. So um, I'm going to start by using this chunkier burgundy color. I'm going to start with this and then I'm just going to weave. I'm going to do a very similar uh, tapestry is this one so you can see how this one I went all the way across I went back stopped halfway went back again or went all the way across to the edge came back and then stopped so it kind of looks like this little wave I'll show you how to do that and then I'll show you the uh, type of weave that I used as well to create that effect first weave that I chose to do was the called the Egyptian weave and that weave you go behind the warp and you can see the warp just a little bit more than I liked and so I decided to switch and just focus on doing the sumac weave. In the sumac weave you go in front of the warp um, so start by going around the warp and you pull under to the left. If you're going to the right, you pull to the left. If you're going, if your weave is going to the left, then you pull out to the right. So in this case, we're going to the right. So I'm pulling to the left. I chose to do, to switch it up and to do the sumac weave um, because I find that it gives it a little bit more texture and you can really see kind of the, the chunky uh, texture of the yarn a little bit more than if the yarn was to go behind the warp. So I'll continue this weave for another few layers and um, try to do that wave look that I showed you before.
perfect. So now I'm at this end. As you can see, my weave is starting to kind of drip down a little bit. If I pull this up, you'll notice it's because my base of it is a little loose. And so all you can do, all you need to do is just really push it up like that and kind of make it straight. Um, so now it's straight and then you can go back and do your weave. For this one, I'm going to make it very similar to this one. So now I'm going to go across and then I'll stop in the middle. So I'll go across here, it's basically the opposite of this. I'll go and start from the right, go across here and about maybe start, stop here and then I'll go back instead of going all the way to the end. here and then now I'll go all the way back here. So now I'll do one more row, maybe stop at this one right here. So I'll wrap it around, an extra wrap around, and then again I'll do an overweave and then come through like that. my first um, weave in this tapestry. To end it, I will double knot it at the end. And then I'll leave a little space. At the very end, um, what you can do is either take a needle or your fingers, and then when it's all cut off the loom, you can tuck this in the back and then cut it even shorter. But you want it to be a little bit loose so you have the room. Uh, to be able to tuck it. So now I'm going to add a color right here. I think I will do maybe the yellow again. Oh no, I'll do the red. So I think for this section, I'm going to add this red color. Um, so I'll just cut a little bit off. I'm just going to do this part right here and then I might end it you know, right there. If you don't want all of these strings at the end, what you can do is you can take your thread and then find a place to tie it in the middle. So what I'll do is I'll um, take it and I'll tie it right here instead of tying it at the end. That way this little tail thing will all, it will already be um, hidden behind your weave. So you can tie it in the middle and then just tuck it behind all your other stuff. And then when you pull it down, you won't be able to see that. So for this weave, I decided to do the sumac weave again. So again, for this weave, you go around the front of the warp and you pull through. So you go around the front, under, and then pull through. Since you're going to the left, you pull to the right. And then you do it again, go around the front and then pull through to the right. It is okay also if you switch up your weave in between, um, like with the same piece of yarn. 
So in between the one that you're trying to do, if you want to switch it up, like if you've changed your mind and you're like, oh, I don't really like this weave, you can always switch it up in the middle. So I'll show you um, how to do that. So I'll do this last one. And then what I'm going to do is just the very simple under over weave. So it comes, the string comes out like that. So I'll do an over and then that will be under, over, under. And then I'll pull it out right here. So this piece, this thicker piece of yarn will come down like that. So it's gonna be hidden. So um, now I'm gonna take the yarn and take it all the way to the left. So I'll go over, under, over, under. and then around like this. So now I will go, I'm interlocking my weaves. So I'm gonna push the bottom up again to make it straight. So this is called interlocking. So you're interlocking these different weave patterns um, and the different types of yarn as well. So. Um, I'm going to do the same under over weave and now I'm going to go over this thicker piece of yarn and I'll pull this piece up and then that's where I'll stop there. So I'll go over, under, over, under, over, under. So I'm going to go do one more row of under over and I'll probably stop. Um, I'll stop right there. And then I have this interesting kind of teal color. So the reason why I chose these kind of different colors too is because this this activity is, if you watched part two of my video, you, you'll you know that I was inspired by a Peruvian study guide that I created. Um, part of the study guide talks about the history of weaving in Peru. So I decided to create t a tutorial about weaving and kind of some more popular weaving techniques that we have today. If you would like to uh, take a look at my Peruvian study guide, I put the link in uh, of my store down below. So you can take a look at that and then you can kind of see uh, where I got my inspiration from. I picked these specific colors because they just remind me of just Peru a little bit. So um, they uh, are very colorful and um, so yeah, so I think that's why I chose these specific colors. They don't necessarily have to go together, but I'm just going to see what it looks like. So um, and who knows, it might turn out really cool. <laughs> so I'm going to take this blue and then I'll go across. I won't go all the way to the end with this one. I'm just going to stop right here and then kind of just do a little chunk of blue right here. I just finished doing the the um, blue, so adding the blue, and then I decided to add the yellow again um, next to the blue. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start adding this like little fringe that I put in the middle. Um, and so how you do that is you cut up little pieces. I'm gonna use the burgundy color. So you don't want the pieces too small because you need to, um, you need to be able to get your fingers around them. So 
let's see, about that. So you want it to be about that length. And then wherever you wanna add this little fringe, um, you can pick your spot. For this one, I'm gonna just, I'm going to just use the center, see how that looks. Uh, so I'll start here. And it's the same technique that you, you use for this fringe. So you use this Raya weave. So you go over and then on the right side, go through, pull it through, left side, pull it through, looks like that, and then push it down. For this, because the, the yarn is very thin, I do two layers and I'll go all the way across. So you can cut out all your pieces ahead of time. And then now I'm going to go across and then two layers and show you what it looks like. We will eventually cut them, but don't cut them yet once you finish. Um, just leave them long like this. And then we're going to do a few more steps and then at some point you will cut them. So to make them shorter like this. So after I did the fringe in the center of the weave. Um, it looks like this. So again, we will cut it to make it shorter. But first you wanna create a little bit of um, a layer above it because you wanna tighten that up. If you cut it too short and you don't have that layer on top, uh, then all the little pieces will fall out. So you don't want that. So you, you're gonna keep it how it is for right now. And then you can create another layer right here. I chose this red, so I'm gonna use this red and just do, uh, just kind of do it halfway because I'm making kind of a, a little pattern or design in mine. If you wanna do it all the way across, again, it's your choice because it's your project. So I'm gonna take this red and then just stop right there. So once you have these layers, um, I added red and then blue, so whatever um, colors you added. Once you have these layers, you can begin to cut the little tassel that's in the middle. So I just kind of go for it. <laughs> um, you want to make sure to just cut the tassel, not the rest of your weave. And then, you know, you can always cut it shorter if you find like the little longer pieces or whatever. Okay. So that's what it looks like. And then now it won't fall out because it's being held together by this top layer. And then you can also see the colors below it. Um, so we're almost done. If you can see, this is our line right here where we're gonna stop weaving. And then we're gonna insert the stick uh, that we have. So what I'm going to do next is create another little tassel here. Uh, what I might do is create kind of a little diagonal to show you what that looks like. Um, so when it goes up a little bit, you can kind of see this one goes up a little bit. So in some of my tapestries, I like them to kind of have this wave look. So that's what I'm going to do with our next thing. So first though, I am going to uh, create the bottom of it. And I'll do the red for the little tassels for here. After tying my yarn to the side of the loom, I decided to do the very simple under over weave. You can also do the subak weave that we learned about earlier. Um, and if you do need to refer back to any of these weaves and how to do them, I have put a timestamp below the video for you to review. As you can see, the way that I made the wave look is I went 
about 10 rows in and then back and then again about eight rows in and then back and then you continue on that pattern maybe four rows in and then back and then you can add your fringe when you're all finished and I just like this downward wave because it just creates a really cool effect to your weave. So I have officially completed weaving my wall tapestry. Um, at the very top, I added this chunkier yarn. And now I'm going to insert the stick. So you begin by weaving in the stick, the very top. So right where the line says stop weaving, you're going to weave in the stick. So once you've done this part, you'll pull the yarn out of uh, the little notches, cut, cut it, and then tie it. So I like to double knot it. And then remove the next one from the notch and then do the same thing. So you'll remove it, cut it, and then double knot it. So you'll do that all the way until the very end. There's your top. 
Um, so what you can do too is just cut, since it's double knotted, they're pretty tight. If you wanna make it a little more secure, you can triple knot it if you want, and then you can just cut off that excess. All right, so there you go. So when you're finished with the top, you'll notice that the bottom is still tied on. So you're going to do the same thing. You will um, remove the yarn from the little notches on the bottom, cut it, and then you can double knot it. So since this one is hiding, behind your tassels. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's straight and nice and pretty because no one will see it. So you can just cut all along these loops and, um, and then just double knot it. So you can cut, go through and cut all the loose string like you did on the top. It doesn't have to be pretty because this part you won't see because it's behind your tassels. Now you'll notice that you have these left over on the sides. So you can do a few things with these extra ones on the sides. You can go and um, double knot them like we did with the simple weave. With this one, when we made our very simple tapestry, we went along the edge and we double knotted them and then cut them really short. You can do that, or since this is hanging on a wall and no one will see the back of it, you can also tuck in some of these pieces into the back of your weave. Um, for that, you it would be helpful to have a, um, a little needle like this. So you can put the yarn in the needle and then pick an area in your weave to tuck it in like that and then you can cut that extra piece. So it just allows the yarn to just stay there. So you can do that with all of them or if you just wish to cut them, that's fine too. So after either cutting or sliding that extra yarn into the back, this is what it looks like. So it kind of just hides that extra yarn and, and then you flip it to the front. And then what I also did is I cut it. So I just used a ruler. Mine is a bit uneven, so you might do a better job of cutting yours, but I just used a ruler and then just took the scissors and cut it. You can cut it different ways. So if you want to cut it diagonally, um, which initially was my thought, which might have looked better, but um, it is what it is. So I cut it flat across like this. Um, so you can do that, or if you just wanna leave it the length that it is, you can do that as well. So now we're going to make uh, the, or tie the string on the top that is going to hang our piece. So I'm just gonna use another piece of yarn. Sometimes I use a stronger twine or something, but in this case, I'm just going to use yarn. And, you know, you want to just put it in, slide it around this area so you can pull it under the stick that you used and then tie it. So again, I always double knot everything. And then again, you do that to the other end. And then double knot it. And you can cut it 
and then there it is and then you can hang it on your wall so thank you so much for watching part three of this video um, again, this was inspired by a Peruvian study guide that I created. So if you would like to take a look at that study guide, feel free to um, check out my shop that is in the link below. And um, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you again for checking it out. Bye.